one. I'll actually demonstrate that for you. Okay. Bad guy here. Gonna walk back. Uh oh, something bad happens. Come up, safety off. There it is. Back in. Now let's try that again, okay? Walking back. Something happens. Up. All right, good. Safety on. Again, I really want to stress the fact you've got to become very dexterous with the safety on and off. Okay, don't want to put it in this situation with the safety off. Always want to have that safety on. Okay, doesn't come off till the gun is out. And then back on, gun goes away. All right, that's the sling. Now, you'll see that it complements my center line hold that I like. Okay, there it is. And if I'm looking at shooting, very easy. This hold really complements what I'm trying to do. Keep the gun lined up with the center of my body, point, and shoot. Move. Shoot. Move. All right. Now, if I want to go for more of an accurate shot, I've got to release, come up, see. Safety on. Then I can also cuff it basically just like that and then rehook up. So that's the chalker sling. And like I said, this is how I prefer to. Uh, dress in case something happens. This is my my rig. I've got my magazines ready and loaded. And now we're going to move on to uh, the next segment of this program, which I call how close is too close. Right, now I point the gun in my direction, okay? Now Scott is bad guy, and he's got the gun this close. Goal number one, deflect, move closer, okay? Now he can hit you, he can scratch you, he can bite you but it's a lot better to get shot, okay? Okay, now this next drill, I've got Scott, uh, my cameraman, who's gonna help me out here, and the object is, how close is too close? One of the mistakes people will make with this rifle is getting too close to the adversary. First, I'm gonna verify that it is, in fact, unloaded. Again, looking down inside the chamber, pull the trigger in a safe direction. Scott now has the gun. Scott is my bad guy. He has somehow come upon me too close, okay? Here's Scott. Now point the gun in my direction, okay? Now Scott is bad guy, and he's got the gun this close. One of the things I'm trying to show you here is that if the gun is this close, first of all, he's not going to miss. Second of all, I am faster. My action is faster than his reaction. So if you are ever in a situation where Scott, crazed bad guy, is really going to harm you, and he's this close, he makes the mistake of coming this close, your best bet may be to get out of the way and grab or push, deflect the muzzle. Now, from there, what would you do, okay? I have another belief that you want to close the distance because the inherent problem with a rifle is that right here, it's no good to Scott, okay? Now, Scott may be bigger than I am. He may be stronger than I am and all that other stuff, but if I'm here, he can't shoot me, okay? And that's the, the big equalizer. So, bad guy has gun pointed at me. My objective is, well, okay, I, I think he's gonna kill me. I'm not gonna put up with that. I need to at least go down fighting or at least give myself a chance. Goal number one, deflect, move closer, okay? And then start to do all kinds of mean and nasty things, bite, scratch, kick, crawl, gouge, anything you can do, okay? But the objective is, is getting close and get that muzzle in close. Just stay, hug him, hug him. He can't shoot you this close. Okay, it's gonna be very difficult. Now he can hit you, he can scratch you, he can bite you, but it's a lot better than getting shot, okay? And chances are that if you're out here, you're not gonna wrestle the gun away unless Scott is a very small person. If you're equally sized, he's got two hands on the rifle. And I tell you what, one shot is gonna make that muzzle feel like a python in your hand. It's gonna hurt, okay? It's gonna be squirming around in your hand. It's gonna make your hand ring and you're gonna wanna let go, okay? So if you're holding on to the barrel, it's gonna hurt you. Hold on to the guard, you'll probably be a little better off. But still, he's got two hands on it. 
and he's going to be able to control it. So my objective here is then to get in, move in, somehow move in, get that gun controlled, grab hold of it, make sure that no matter what I do, that muzzle is out of my way, okay? And then just hang on. Kick, kick, scratch, headbutt, eye gouge, scream, yell, do anything, but don't let him pull a shot off in your direction. If you're going to enter a doorway, get in, get out. And you can see consistent accuracy. And that's what I'm looking for. Let's talk about the ways of death. Doorways, stairways, hallways. They're problematic because the frames of the door basically frame you up. The walls of the hall frame you up. And the same thing is true with a stairway. Again, you're usually dealing with going up or down. It's very critical because you can only see one direction. You don't know which way the guy, the bad guy is. So in a doorway situation, you can see I make myself a very unique target because subconsciously it becomes a lot easier to hit me because the bad guy, person with the gun, will use the walls as a reference in this boom right down the middle. Now this gun's unloaded. We're going to go ahead and talk about how to enter doorways, how to enter a room, and how to use the AR-15 to do so. First and foremost, the most important thing I want to tell you is that never stop in a doorway. Never stop in a hall if you, you know, have a choice. Okay. If you're going to enter a doorway, get in, get out. Okay. Get out of that hall or way of death. All right. So that's my first objective: is get in, get out. Okay. Now let's talk about how to get in. And I'm going to go ahead and work with you a little bit. Again, this gun is unloaded. I want you to observe how my eyes work. We're going to revert back to the sweet spot theory, shouldering the weapon, okay? Gun is high, sights are lined up with my eyesight. Now, I'm going to keep both eyes open, and as I approach the doorway, the gun is high in this area, okay? Now, I don't want to lower the gun at all. I want to keep it up in this area. As I come to a doorway, I don't know where the bad guy is. Could be on either side. So obviously I'm going to start on one side. I'm going to get up in here and I'm going to start to pie or cut the room into slices. Always keeping the gun erect. Always keeping it fixated with my line of sight. Look. Step. Leading with my third eye. My third eye being the muzzle. Okay? So no matter what I see, if I see a bad guy, I don't want to go in and go, oh, there he is, and raise the gun. I want the gun to already be up. Gun's up, looking through, neck is turtled a little bit, scrunched into my shoulders. Both eyes are open, safety's on, looking, looking, bang, bad guy there, okay? Again, cut the room into slices or pie the room. That means going a small slice at a time. Look, look, look. Always leading with the muzzle. The muzzle is your third eye. You want the bad guy to see the muzzle first. So if I were looking at this, I would slowly, 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 slowly come around from this far perspective. I don't want to get that close to the door. Just trying to demonstrate there. As I come around, come around, come around, Come around, come around, come around, okay, okay, this is where a guy may hide, okay, I don't see him, okay, now, 